Arsenal have won a game. I repeat, Arsenal have won a game of football. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeu, uh, coming to you with a big smile on my face uh, for the first time in a while, because it has been a while since, of course, Arsenal uh, won their last game. We went nine without a win in all competitions. Not good enough uh, at all for a club of this stature. And understandably, the fan base was getting a little bit wound up by things. Um, we finally got a victory. Uh, at the London Stadium where we beat West Ham United having come from a goal behind and on this edition we're going to be taking you through that game I'm going to be sharing my thoughts uh, on the game of course I should have got this out earlier today so apologies that it's coming at you a little bit later uh, than planned but unfortunately work got in the way um, been here there and everywhere today so uh, head over to 90 Minute Football subscribe to their channel uh, we recorded a show today which will be coming at you uh, in the next few days I believe also uh, when on Love Sport Radio and if you're interested in what I had to say on there uh, you can find it on my Twitter feed so please do check that out as well um, so let's begin by uh, talking about Freddie Lundberg's team selection of course uh, he went with the front six that I picked in my preview uh, which was Granit Xhaka, Lucas Torreira, Mesa Ozil, uh, Martinelli on the left, Pepe on the right and Aubameyang through the middle. That's what I went with uh, on the preview show. That's what I wanted to see. So I was naturally, of course, pleased when I saw that that was the team Freddie picked. Now, did it particularly work in the first half? Probably not. But you saw that having that firepower on the pitch eventually got us over the line because all three uh, of that front three ended up getting themselves on the score sheet and Arsenal won the game as a result. Um, the only thing that did surprise me was his decisions uh, in defence. He, of course, uh, removed David Lewis from the team and, and you know Arsenal seemed to defend a little bit better. Uh, Socrates played at centre-back alongside Callum Chambers um, and then, of course, Hector Bellerin was injured in the warm-up. And so he was replaced by Ainsley Maitland-Niles at the last minute. And Kieran Tierney picked up an injury during the game, meaning he had to make way for Saad Kalasinac as well. Remains to be seen whether those two will be fit uh, going into the weekend. Looks like they won't. Um, that's just my gut feeling at the moment. Of course, the club haven't confirmed that or anything, but that's uh, what I'm thinking at the moment. So uh, I think we need to start preparing for the fact that it's likely to be Ainsley Maitland-Niles at right back and then uh, Ser Kalasinac at left back against Manchester City at the Emirates on Sunday. Of course, we've got the game against Standard Liège in between that, uh, but for me, I'm really looking at whether they can be fit uh, for the Manchester City game. Uh, so the game kicked off, Arsenal got off to a, a slow start in my opinion, we were trying to pass the ball out from the back and it was that same old shit again and the reason I wanted to see Mustafi and David Lewis in the back line was because I just felt, feel that with Arsenal, whichever of the two you select, we still can't defend and we're still going to concede goals. So in my mind, it made sense to go for the players that will make us more comfortable in possession, that will see us push further up the field like we did in that first half of, uh, of the Norwich game and hopefully we'll control the game as a result. I was proved wrong. I hold my hands up because Arsenal defended a hell of a lot better with Socrates uh, and Chambers at centre-back. Now, do I think that partnership is sustainable? No, I don't. Um, I still think Socrates is crap. Um, I still think Callum Chambers is an OK centre-half, but maybe not quite good enough to hold down a, a regular spot in the team. Um, that's just my gut feel at the moment. But given the way everybody else is playing and how poorly things have been of late, it would be foolish to leave him out, wouldn't it? Um, now, of course, Arsenal conceded the first goal. It was a poor goal to concede. Uh, same old typical Arsenal stuff, not picking up their men properly. Um, Ogbonna got his head on the ball. It looked like it had come off his shoulder and the VAR had a good look at it before eventually awarding the goal. But I didn't really have any complaints about that. It looked like it struck the top of his shoulder just here. Um, so for me, that was okay. I've seen people criticising Ainsley Maitland-Niles in the aftermath of that, talking about uh, how he turns his body to, and he ends up deflecting it past Bernd Leno. But for me, things just happen so quickly in a game of Premier League football that it's almost super critical to sit here and have a go at a player for turning his back or turning his body in the way that Ainsley Maitland-Niles did. It's a gut reaction. It is an instant reaction to something that is unfolding in front of you very, very quickly. So I can't 
get on board with the criticism that he's faced in the aftermath of that. I think it's really, really unfair. Um, and ultimately, Ogbonna shouldn't be allowed to get on the end of the ball in the first place. I think that's where the problem starts. Not necessarily with it, It's not necessarily with the man who kind of deflects it past his own keeper. Um, you know, it, it's an accident. These things happen. Um, yes, you can prevent them, but I think hindsight is a wonderful thing. And when you're there in the heat of the moment, I think it's really, really difficult to sit and say Ainsley Mate and was to blame for that. Uh, I thought he was one of our better players, and I'm going to come into that uh, when I talk about my player reviews a little bit later on. Um, Arsenal's goals, of course, well, to be quite frank, the Gabriel Martinelli goal came out of nowhere because Arsenal didn't even look like scoring. Arsenal didn't look like creating anything. We'd been really poor in the final third. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang hadn't really done a great deal. Martinelli was working hard, but you know it wasn't really coming to any fruition. Then you had Pepe on the other side, who for me was being chopped by Aaron Cresswell ridiculously. How Cresswell stayed on the pitch, uh, I don't know. I personally feel that... Um, you know, the first challenge was a booking and I feel like the second one, which he eventually got injured for and had to go off, and I'm talking about Cresswell, I, I think that was a booking as well. So I thought he was really, really fortunate to stay on the pitch for for as long as he did, if I'm honest. Or I should say to stay on the pitch without being sent off the pitch um, rather than going off injured. Of course, the Martinelli goal was was a nice piece of counter-attacking play. Um, the ball broke uh, to Torreira, played it out to Kalasinac on the left, drove forward as Kalasinac does. That is one of the things that he does quite well. But this time he looked up, he picked out Gabriel Martinelli and the finish was the finish of somebody who's been scoring goals at the highest level for years. He, he looked at the goal, knew exactly where he was, glances up, opens up his right boot and steers it into that far corner beyond Martin um, and puts Arsenal level. And, and as I've already said, his goal was the catalyst for what followed. That next nine minutes was courtesy of what Gabriel Martinelli had just done. And this is an incredible young talent. He's an unbelievable player. And for me, he's got to start week in, week out. I don't care if he's 18. I don't care, you know, how much experience he's got under his belt. He is currently performing at an extremely high level and certainly deserves a place in this Arsenal team. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see some more of Gabriel Martinelli now. Um... Then, of course, came the Nicolas Pepe goal, and uh, Pepe received the ball. I think it was from Aubameyang. He took a touch, he set himself, and he just bent it round into that far corner. And that is what we've all been crying out to see from Nicolas Pepe. You could see um, maybe taking a bit of confidence from a few uh, tricks that had come off in the game, from a few positive runs that he had made. Um, and he bent it into the far corner, and, and you could see in his celebration that it meant the absolute world to him. Nicolas Pepe um, has finally arrived in the Premier League. Great to see. Um, then, of course, there was the third. And again, Pepe heavily involved. Uh, a little dink into the penalty area. And there was Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang on the volley uh, to put it in the back of the net, doing what he does best. And I have this argument with people time and time again. We talk about Lacazette. We talk about Aubameyang. And yes, Lacazette may do more in the build-up. He may do more in terms of holding the ball up, bringing others into possession. But if you have Pierre-Emerick on, uh, Aubameyang sorry, on the pitch there is a great chance that he's going to score you a goal. More of a chance he's going to score you a goal than Alexander Lacazette. And their goal records tell you that. So for me, he's got to play. And being in that key position um, of the centre forward, I think is far more suited um, to Aubameyang than, than sticking him out on the left or sticking him out on the right. So I was really pleased to see that come off. Um, so that was the, the three goals. And then we move on to touch on a couple of other points. I've spoken about Martinelli, so I'm not going to do that uh, again. I'm going to talk about Nicolas Pepe uh, in a little bit more detail because I thought what was really positive about him yesterday was his willingness to pick up the ball and drive at his opponent. And I think that's something that's been missing from him of late. I don't know if Lundberg's had a word. I don't know if it's something he's been working on. And he did do it in the wrong places at times yesterday. Um, but he showed that he was confident enough to take on players. And he had the beating of Aaron Cresswell all evening. And you could see that in the fact that Cresswell had to keep chopping him uh, to, to stop him, basically. That was how good Nicola Pepe was yesterday. Um, I'll be honest, for the first 55, 60 minutes or whatever it was, 
the entire Arsenal team were poor, um, including Nicolas Pepe. But when a team performs like that, it's really difficult to then look at individuals and say, you didn't play well, you didn't play well, because ultimately the whole team were poor. I thought we had a lot of possession, but we didn't really make anything happen with it. That phase between having the ball in our in our defence and then moving it into the midfield and then that one step further wasn't there. Arsenal were really lacking in that area. Um but good to see uh, things turn around. I, I've said it and I'll say it again. Martinelli was the catalyst, but Pepe took it on. Aubameyang took it on. And ultimately, Arsenal got what was a vital, vital win uh, at the London Stadium. I want to talk about um, the midfield balance. Now, uh, a lot of people criticised me in the lead up to this game when I picked my 11 of what I wanted to see and I went with Xhaka and Torreira again because I feel that those two provide Arsenal with the best balance now do I necessarily think that that Granit Xhaka is great no but I think what he offers nobody else offers and that's why he's got to be in the team for me so um, I think in spite of him giving the ball away a few times yesterday sloppily I might add um he did make a positive contribution, particularly in that 15, 20 minute period in which Arsenal were really good and really up their game. And he was taking the game by the scruff of his neck, picking up the ball, spraying passes. And I think that he showed what he can do. Now, granted, again, I'll say it again, you can't be giving the ball away the way he did on a few occasions yesterday. It's not acceptable. Um, you will be punished more often than not in this league. But we saw glimpses of what Granit Xhaka can do. And I thought he was good in the last two games. Thought his performance overall dropped off a little bit yesterday. But in that 10-15 minute spell, he was as good as anybody in an Arsenal shirt. And for that, he deserves credit. Um, I think Freddie's been speaking about Arsenal in the transition, hasn't he, since he's taken over. And I think it was clear that work is being done on that. And I say that because I felt like Torreira and Xhaka were a lot more defensively aware yesterday. They were a lot more uh, reserved in terms of bombing forward. Um, don't get me wrong, Torreira did it a few times, but I thought it looked as though those two were a lot more uh, protective of the back four than they have been in recent times. And when West Ham broke, on the occasions that they did break, we always had our back four and those two in front of them. And that's why we defended a lot better than we have in recent weeks. That plays a huge part because your centre-halves don't get sucked into battles that they don't want to be involved in. They can sit off, they can watch, they can read the game, pick up the strikers as they make their runs, knowing full well that their midfielders are going to pick up anybody else who tracks and are going to offer a first line of defence, I, I guess. Um, so that was really, really important. Freddie's um, clearly addressed that. Still a lot of work to be done on that front, but I think it was important um, that he made a start on that and I think we saw evidence last night to suggest that that work is ongoing so pleased to see that um now people have spoken about the performance after this game and, and I've spoken to some Arsenal fans who have said to me you know yeah we got we got a few goals and, and we turned it around but West Ham are poor um and our performance wasn't great it's nothing to shout about and to a degree I agree however Things were so dire at Arsenal, the situation had become so desperate that it was the how didn't matter. Arsenal just needed to win a game of football, just needed to pick up three points in the Premier League. And to do it away from home in particular, where we've struggled all season, was really, really important. The performance, it for me, when you're talking about last night and the significance of it, the performance is a side note and shouldn't be overlooked because in a performance you can find things uh, on which you need to improve um, you can find things that you can take into the next games but for me I just felt that things had become so bad and, and the confidence was so low any win will do and we've just got to take it and move on and be positive and, and we've got standard Liège on Thursday and then Manchester City come to the Emirates now imagine how you'd be feeling about Manchester City coming to the Emirates on Sunday had Arsenal not won at West Ham it's, it's such an uplift that this victory has given us. And I just feel like there's a danger of dwelling on the performance too much when in this actual scenario, you just need to look at the result. And the result is key. And I feel, um, you know, it's key for Freddie Lundberg, who was coming under a bit of pressure, from myself included, about whether he was suited uh, to doing this role, even in the short term. Now, 
there were reports last week, weren't there, about Freddie Lundberg uh, losing the dressing room. And for me, I think the scenes that you saw after the game proved that that's not the case at all. Um, there were hugs from everybody. Um, you could see there was a bit of emotion in old Socrates as well, um, having uh, got the win. I just feel like when you looked at Lundberg and the way he embraced the players after the game and the way they embraced him, you cannot surely believe that there's a rift there and that those players don't want to play for him. Confidence was poor. Um, it was very low going into this game. Lundberg's spoken about that himself. That shouldn't be as much of an issue now that we've picked up a win. I'm not saying it's going to go away overnight. Uh, issues that have been brewing for months don't just disappear with one game, with one result. So we still got to be patient. Um, but that was key. And you could see in the reaction of Freddie Lundberg and the reaction of the players that, for me, they are united, um, at least for the time being. I'm uh, going to move on now, finally, to my player ratings. Um, spoken at quite length uh, about certain players, so I'm not going to dwell on the ratings too much. I'm just going to go mainly through the numbers. Burn Leno, uh, I'm going to give him a 6. Um, I thought he was okay last night. Nothing great. Uh, nothing bad. Uh, to be honest, I felt like there were times where he receives the ball at his feet and he just still puts defenders under pressure. And I know people talk about him being one of those goalkeepers who plays with their feet, but for me, there's a time and a place to do it. And when your team are really suffering from a lack of confidence, I think you've got to use your common sense a little bit, slightly change that approach. Um, so I'd like to see, um, you know, Bernd Leno cut that out a little bit uh and yeah, to, to be honest, I'll give him a six. I think that's a fair rating. Ainsley Maitland-Niles for me, um, I'm going to give him a seven. I thought he was one of Arsenal's better players. I thought he got up and down with good energy um, and performed uh, pretty well overall, considering that he was thrown in at the very last minute. So he gets a seven for me. Um, I'm not going to rate Kieran Tierney because he wasn't on the pitch a great uh, deal of time. So I'm going to go with Kolasinac. I'll say Kolasinac played a, a six and a half. Um not particularly great defensively, but gave us a bit of a directness in the way he went forward. And, of course, uh, provided the assist for Gabriel Martinelli's goal, which was a key, key moment for Arsenal. Uh, Socrates, I'm going to give him a five. I still don't like him in possession of the ball. I think he's terrible with the ball at his feet. And I think he puts us and he's, uh, you know, he puts, sorry, himself and his teammates under a lot of pressure. Uh, Callum Chambers gets a six for me. He was OK. Like I've already said, I thought the Arsenal defence looked a lot better because they were screened a lot better. And that's really, really important. Um, Granite Xhaka, for me, I'll give him a six and a half. Um, I would have given him a seven because I thought he did a good job. But there were a few moments, I think two or three spring to mind immediately, where he gave the ball away poorly and put us under real, real pressure. So uh, that's preventing me giving him a higher mark. Lucas Torreira, um, I'm going to give him a six and a half as well. I uh, thought he'd done an OK job, again, screening the defence. Uh, Nicolas Pepe, I'm going to give him a seven. Um, Actually, I'm going to give him a seven and a half because that goal uh, was of the highest quality plus the assist. And I thought he made some good runs uh, throughout the game. Martinelli gets the same for me, seven and a half. Didn't get a great deal of the ball in the early stages um, and at the beginning of the second half, but kept plugging away, kept working hard, uh, done more than double the number of sprints um, of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who was second in the sprint table, by the way. Um, I know that might not mean a great deal to, to everybody, but for me, it tells a story about a young player keen to take his chance and really working hard for the team. So he gets a, uh, a seven and a half for me as well. And Aubameyang, I'll give him the same. He was quiet. He had to be patient for long periods of the game. But when, when the ball came to him, um, he took his chance and ultimately sealed the victory. Um, so those are my player ratings. Let me know what you think about those in the comments. Thank you once again for tuning in, whether you're listening to us via the audio or, of course, uh, via YouTube. Um, sorry that the video is a little bit late. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and we'll be bringing you more content throughout the week. So until next time, take care. Ciao.